So we are looking at the psychodynamic explanation of offensive behaviour. And if I could put up our lesson goals. So by the end of the lesson, we all should be able to outline the key features of the psychodynamic explanation. And there are two main parts of the psychodynamic explanation. One of them is maternal deprivation, and the other one is the super ego. And as I said, maternal deprivation will very much link to what we covered in first year with regards to the attachment theory. And then the super ego will tie in what you should have covered when you looked at approaches in first year as well. And then, hopefully, we will get on to evaluating the psychodynamic explanation for both of these subcategories, so for maternal deprivation and for the superego as well. I know that you guys haven't covered issues and debates in detail, so this lesson will introduce at least two of the issues and debates, maybe three, to get you to that higher level of robbing the examiner of all the marks. So when you complete that 16 mark essay and you throw in an issue and debate, you're saying to the examiner, listen, you have no marks left to even give me. I've taken everything, yeah? So in terms of bulk, Bowlby looked at something that psychologists call maternal deprivation. And this is where, as a child, you experience separation from your primary caregiver. But this separation has to take place in a particular period. So I've got two sentences up there, and I want you guys to read it and have a think of the words that actually fill into those sentences. So prolonged separations have long-term negative emotional consequences Especially if the separation happens during what period? The critical. The what? Critical. Critical is the top one, and then sensitive. sensitive is the bottom one. So sensitive ranges from a zero to five, and then the critical ranges from zero to two. So maternal deprivation has to happen during those periods. So maternal deprivation is the loss of emotional care that is normally provided by a primary caregiver usually observed via separation between a mother and child. Now, in terms of the consequences of maternal deprivation, remember Bowlby said that those who experience maternal deprivation as children, they go on to become a particular type of adult, and he called them affectionless psycho... Exactly. And we can already see, just by labelling them as affectionless psychopaths, we can see the link to criminal behavior, because we've looked at criminal personalities and how people who are psychotic, so lacking empathy, egocentric, can go on to be criminals. They have the following characteristics. So they are people that lack normal affection. They are people that lack shame. So they feel no way about the things that they do. They do what they want. They are people who lack responsibility and also lack empathy or understanding the feelings of others. Now my, my question to you guys is, based on all of these characteristics of someone who experiences maternal deprivation, goes on to become an affectionless psychopath, how can we link each of these characteristics to criminal behaviour? So these reflect some of the traits that criminals do have, just based on Einstein's research on criminal personality. What about the lack in responsibility? This is reminding me of the cognitive explanation. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, when you give other people, you blame other people's thoughts and feelings. Exactly, and what is the key term? If you blame other people for your own actions, causal attributions, exactly. So even with the psychodynamic approach, you can make links to other topics that we covered. So in terms of the cognitive explanation, you are having a causal attribution about your actions. You are imposing on someone else. You're pushing the responsibility to someone else. And that's called having an external locus of control. Also, feeling no shame means that you, you really don't care about conforming to social norms. So even if the whole idea of, of, of your morals are built on the social norms of society, for someone who's an affectionless psychopath, it doesn't apply to them. They have no social norms because they do what they like. Yeah. So, just to, as a recap, you guys would have looked at the 44 feet study <coughs> in the attachment theory. And the easiest way to remember Bowlby and the year is the fact that it was done in 1944. I don't remember he did that on purpose, but 
he's made it easy for all psychology students to remember that he used 44 thieves. So what he did is he compared 44 thieves and 44 control patients from the child guidance clinic using interviews, IQ tests and medical reports. Already I can hear evaluation points screaming at me. Are there any screaming at you guys at the moment? Mm -hmm. Social desirability bias on interviews, exactly that. So they could present themselves in a positive light. And remember, he interviewed the children and their parents as well. Any other point? Sample size. So 44 is not a massive sample. And how did he even select the control patients? Why were they in the child guidance clinic in the first place? Are they really a good control group? Are they normal, quote unquote? Any other evaluation points? The fact that it was a child violence clinic. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't really um, generalise it to the whole population. Exactly. The fact that this study took place in a child guidance clinic, you can't generalise it to the broader population. So not all thieves have that, let's say, opportunity to go into a guidance clinic. There are some thieves who are still roaming the street. How can we explain their behaviour? So that aside, he compared them. And he found that 39% of the 44 thieves had experienced early separation. And by early separation, we're talking about separation during their critical period. period. Whereas none of the control groups, so the 44 normal people, normal patients, they did not experience any early separation. And then just to break it down even further, of the 44 thieves, 14 were characterised as affectionless, and 86% of the 14 affectionless, they experienced frequent separation. But the main points that I want you guys to get down is this first one and this second one. The fact that he found that 39% of the 44 thieves had experienced early separation. Have you got it down? Yeah, but that's a small sample of only 39% of which was not a lot of people. God bless you, Vivian. You know, remember when I said about unpacking the percentages? Yeah. So 39% of the 44 thieves experienced early separation. Okay, that's all well and good. And Bowlby, just based on that alone, said separation leads to criminal behaviour. But hold on a minute. If we were to unpack the percentage, that means there's 61% remaining. And the 61% of thieves did not experience early separation, but they still went on to become thieves. So that for me says, actually, there's other factors that can cause someone to become a criminal beyond experiencing separation. Uh, would you say that unless it's like 90, 100% or like near 100% then you can't like conclude that? Definitely. So unless it's close to that 100% mark, you must consider other factors. Yeah? So it could be that the 61% the who went on to become thieves, it could be that they came from a poor background, or maybe they weren't doing well in school, or maybe they were just unemployed. Maybe they felt like doing it. They made the choice to do it. Who knows? So based on this, it's a very simple study. This is probably one of the easiest explanations you guys could ever use in the exam, especially because it links with what you did in first year. It's now time for us to evaluate this because I can, the evaluation points are screaming at me. And this is where we collect all the 10 marks. So as Yara and I were just quickly discussing, the psychodynamic approach is great because it considers the role of emotions. Whereas the other explanations of offending behaviour, they fail to consider the role of emotions. So the cognitive approach says, well, yes, the way you think has led to criminal behaviour. It's the morals that you have that led, has led you to commit crimes. Or the biological approach says it's your genes. But this approach says, well, actually, maybe it's the way that you feel that has led you to commit offending behaviour. And then the other point which we briefly discussed is unpacking the percentages. So only 39% of the thieves experience separation. So the remaining 61% delinquency, which is another word for criminal behaviour, was caused by other th factors beyond separation. So separation isn't the only reason for criminal behaviour, as Bowlby's research would suggest. And this trick of unpacking the percentages to stretch your evaluation points with some of the comments that I made on your essays, because that can literally take you from maybe only having eight marks on an evaluation section to having four marks in that section, 
just by unpacking the percentage. And then we've got this thing about Bowlby's conclusion from that piece of research. She says that separation leads to people becoming affectionless psychopaths, which then leads to criminal behaviour. But all of that is just correlational. It doesn't mean that separation has caused criminal behaviour. And one of my favourite sentences which I learned when I was studying my A-levels is correlation does not imply causation. So the fact that these two things correlate together, the fact that separation and criminal behaviour have a relationship, doesn't mean that separation has caused criminal behaviour. It could be the case that you making the decision to get involved in crime has caused you to be separated from your family. Or it could be the case that as a child you have a temperament which is very difficult and that has led to the separation which led you to become a criminal. There are so many factors involved. So on this slide, I've put Bowlby's research highlights a correlation between separation and emotional problems, but correlation does not imply causation. The emotional problems could have been a result of other factors, so it could be other things. It could be that they were abused as a child, not necessarily separated from their parent, but the abuse led them to having emotional problems, which led them to becoming criminals. And then that last point, did the separation cause the emotional problems? Or did the emotional problems, so did them being affecting the psychopaths or having any other difficult personality trait cause the separation? And this is one that you can use for any correlational research that you come across. Correlation does not imply causation. The fact that there is a relationship between the two variables does not mean that one has caused the other. And this is where I'm bringing in a little bit of the issues and debate. So you guys, I'm hoping, would have heard of free will. What is free will? Yeah, you act on your own volition. You, you have the freedom to pick and choose what you want to do. Things don't happen to you. You make them happen. So in terms of this whole determinism versus free will debate, the determinist approach would argue that separation determines criminal behaviour. You are a criminal because you were separated from your primary caregiver between the ages zero to five. Free will argues you've made the choice to become a criminal. And I'm very much on the free will side. And here's my reason for it. There are some people who were separated from their primary caregiver between the ages zero and five, so during the critical period or the sensitive period, and they did not go on to become criminals. Why? Because they chose not to. Because they chose not to. And then your argument would be, why is it that there are people who have been separated at a young age from their primary caregiver and they haven't gone on to be criminals? By virtue of the psychodynamic explanation, they should have become criminals. But they haven't. If we were to bring in the nature versus nurture debate, well, this approach is very much on the, on which side? Nurture. Nurture. So, yeah, that's great, but it almost negates the role of nature. So what if the person is born with genes that predispose them to aggressive behaviour? How can we balance out the two? Alright, has everyone got this? I think the second to last evaluation point on this part of the psychodynamic approach is its real world application. So if we know that separation can lead to criminal behaviour, and you guys as psychologists, you've been tasked with reducing criminal behaviour in your local areas, well you can go into your social worker's um, head office and say actually you need to stop all this separation that happens between children and their primary caregiver at a young age. And that could consequently reduce criminal behaviour in our area. So in this case, the psychodynamic approach offers insight into crime prevention strategies, such as stopping separation happening during that critical period. So our final evaluation point is this thing of physical versus emotional separation. And it is important to know the difference. 
because there are some people or some children who can be physically separated from their parents but not experience maternal deprivation because that emotional care is still being provided to them. And I say, well, could there be cultural differences? Because, of course, there are, the, we live in a westernised world where we're quite individualistic, whereas if we were go, to go into the Israeli kibbutz society, where they're very communal, if their child was to experience physical separation, they would be more likely to become maternally deprived and more likely to become affectionate psychopaths. Whereas here, where we're raised in an individualist society, we may be physically separated, but we still have an emotional connection. And it means that we don't go on to become affectionate psychopaths. So this is where the whole talk of daycares, should there be daycares? Well, yeah. Your parents need to work. They need to work. As long as when you're separated physically, you still have that emotional bond. So when you go home, you're still cared for, you're still looked after. So this evaluation point is just highlighting the difference between physical separation and emotional separation. And it could be saying that, you know, the remaining 61% of the thieves that weren't separated during that critical, critical period because while we were solely focused on the physical separation, it could be that emotionally they were separated from their primary caregiver, and that's why they became thieves. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so once you've got that down, we'll do a quick review. And then when we come back, we'll look at the second part of the psychodynamic explanation, which is to do with the super ego and voice. Okay, my quick questions. Maternal deprivation can lead to what? Affectionless psychopathy. Affectionless psychopathy. And he was a researcher who conducted the main study in this field. That'll be when did he conduct it? 1944. Amen. And how many participants did he have? 84. Oh, trick question. He had 88, but what was the split? So he had 44 thieves and 44 normal people <laughs> control. And how did he compare them? Was he used? Everything, you guys have got it. Okay, my other question is, what was the percentage that he found of the 44 thieves? 39% had experienced what? Maternal deprivation. Maternal deprivation, which is maternal deprivation. Perfect. What else? Evaluation points. This one, I'm going to ask people to put their hands up. So, give me one evaluation point of the whole maternal deprivation, explanation of offensive behaviour. So you can apply it to the real world. You can apply it to the real world in what way? Um, to try and avoid separation. To try and avoid separation and you will reduce crime rates, right? Perfect. Um, I'm packing the percentage. So, yeah. Um, there was only 39% that that um, that experience for separation. Mm -hmm. So that means 61% um, of the criminals Exactly. Perfect. It is deterministic, and how can we elaborate on that bit more? Yeah, it doesn't leave any room for choice for those who choose to be criminals. And one more, Vivian. 